Welcome back to the Nerd Nest Podcast, everybody. It has been a really long time since we did a live version of the show. So for all of you that are here for the live show, thank you so much for tuning in. If you don't know about the live show, then you can always subscribe to youtube.com slash nerd nest and uh, click on that little bell. And if you see a live show, then you know that we're recording the show live. I'm joined today by Rich. Hey, Rich, what's up, man? Hey, much, man. How are you doing? I'm happy to be back. Yeah, it's good to see you. I'm I'm excited to talk about this stuff. Uh, this is our last show for two weeks because I'm going to PAX, uh, but I'm excited to talk. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, Jimmy, you were playing Hello. Helldivers right before right before we tuned in. I was on a call with a lawyer. Oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, yeah, 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 right, right. Shut up. And I was playing <laughs> Helldivers, but yeah. Uh, that game is still very good. I didn't get a chance to try out the mechs or anything or any of the new Warbond stuff. So I just was like, oh, I got like an hour. I'll try and get some in. And still a great game, you know? Still it fun. is. And we'll talk more about the games that we've been playing later on in the episode. But we want to start with the news that we have... We are still waiting. I was talking to Rich yesterday, and I was trying to think about what are we going to talk about on the podcast tomorrow. I got some some stories, but what do I want to start with? And uh, he was he he held up his Legion Go and said, "I'm making a change here." And I said, "Oh, that's interesting." And we'll talk about that change that he's making in just a second. But we're still waiting for Steam OS. Like Steam OS, Valve said, "Geez, I don't even know how long ago." Like here, I'm looking at an interview from. November 10th last year. This is the most recent time that they've said something like this. Uh, but basically, they were talking to PC Gamer, and they were like, so when are we going to get SteamOS 3. whatever outside of the Steam Deck? And Lawrence Yag said, oh, man, it's very high on our list. It's on our list, and we are working on it. But a lot of the same people that would make general install of SteamOS available are the same people that were working on Galileo which they were making the Steam Deck OLED work. We're hoping soon, I was very high on our list, we want to make SteamOS more widely available. We'll probably start with making it available on other handhelds with similar gamepad uh, style controller. And then further beyond that to more arbitrary devices. I think the biggest thing uh, is just, you know, driver support and making sure that it can work on whatever PC it happens to land on. Because right now it is very very tuned for steam deck and oh i just realized that my friends are not here in the picture but uh <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna fix that right now while while uh rich jumps in and tells us what yeah. like what's your reaction to, to reading that yeah so i definitely remember seeing that when when uh that interview happened right and uh, thankfully i i had some relief that they were at least saying kind of reaffirming that they they want to do this but at the same time I I had already given hope and I continue to not have hope for this to happen. I think eventually they'll do it, but it doesn't seem like it's a priority to them. And that quote or that uh, mention of the fact that those people were the same people that were working on the Steam Deck OLED, um, I feel like that can apply to anything else that they're going to work on, right? So like if they're now working on the Steam Deck 2, then that, that question kind of still arises, right? Like, are they going to work on Steam Deck or Steam OS 3.0, or are they just going to continue working on Steam Deck 2 or whatever the next handheld is? So it just doesn't seem like it's high on their list of priorities. Um, so that's why I'm happy that there are community efforts that that are kind of pushing that along. And what do you what do you uh, what do you think about that, Jimmy? While I try and make Rich not a giant <laughs> person on the video, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I talked about it in the video I recorded today which will go up sometime this week. But I was like, I my thought was it was taking so long maybe because they want to make sure they get the biggest, you know, group of people as possible when they launch it. But then I just, after you read what you just said, it seems like they're obviously targeting the ROG Ally, maybe the Legion Go, maybe whatever is working on. I just hope it's like, not too long after it comes out that it'll work with nvidia cards because that's obviously the problem you run into with a lot of the other fan made oss i have like a two terabyte ssd that's in my like laptops extra ssd bay that's like ready to go so i can dual boot steam os because i'm obviously really interested in it because the stuttering issues that steam os fixes i just don't want to deal with stuttering anymore so 
I hope it doesn't take too long, but it's weird that they keep dropping hints about it and then moving people over to like work on the next hardware thing. I get that there's probably a smaller team working on all this stuff, but like maybe hire more people to work on one thing at once instead of kind of just like bouncing all over the place. Maybe that's the philosophy because it gets to a point where it's like, if you're not going to release it, stop talking about it. You know, like they're the ones that are kind of putting the uh, feel they're, they're putting the information out there. So people are getting excited for a real thing. It's not like rumors or speculation or anything. It's like, if you're going to announce it, which they did when the steam deck was even announced in the first place, it's like, get moving on it. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's get this out there. That's it. Yeah, and I I do like the idea, like, if they're not going to, I do still think that it is a priority for them, and I do think that they are still going to do it. That's one thing where I think Rich and I disagree. Like, he says if if it was really a priority, they would have done it by now. But I feel like once you install SteamOS on a device, it makes it so much more frictionless to, to use Valve's store. And so there's so much of a motivation, just a financial motivation, that that it makes it in Valve's best interest to get that on other hardware, uh, especially just random, random ass PCs like the one that I got sitting over under my TV over here. Like it, it if I had that on there, I feel like I would go into that store more often. Instead of when I sit down and there, I have to get out a keyboard and get out a mouse and click like seven things before it goes into big picture mode. And then sometimes when I start a game, it doesn't work the way that I wanted it to. None of that stuff happens when you are on a Steam Deck. It just, it's just, it just works. And I think mm-hmm. that that's something that a lot of people want. They want that. Uh, what's what's it called? A twelve foot interface or a ten foot interface? Right. Yeah, they yeah. want that on their TVs. And that's one of the things that I think that Valve is going to bring eventually. Um, we did get a comment from uh, Mick in our live chat. Uh, he said, SteamOS is what sets Steam Deck apart from other devices. They should not make it available for other hardware. If people want SteamOS, buy a Steam product. I don't, I don't personally agree with that because mm-hmm. Valve wins when you use their store. Right. Valve doesn't. Steam OS is not the loss leader in order to get somebody to buy Valve's hardware. Valve's hardware is the loss leader to get people into their store. At least that's my opinion. What do you think about that, Rich? Do you think that they should just stick to, you know, make other people use it on Steam and only Steam OS or Steam Deck? I, I definitely want them to make SteamOS general use. So I, I, I'm, I definitely don't agree with that. But also there's, <laughs> yeah, what is going on? I don't know, um, man. <laughs> it's uh, the, the rustiness of going live. Yeah. Um, so there's that. But also I think that like, you know, at this point Valve has said it, right? I, it, it'd be different if Valve didn't say it, but they've said it. They've reaffirmed it. This is their direction. They want to make it generally available so if they want to make it who am i to question them right like that's what they said yeah um, uh go yeah. ahead well i was i was going to mention there was another comment from chaos fan law about uh uh what did it say so can't get hollow iso are there any alternatives so yeah uh we're, we are going to talk about some alternatives we'll talk about it right now that's a perfect transition go ahead okay so bazite just released their 2.4 um yeah, their 2.4 release. And here it is on the Lenovo Legion Go. And cool. yeah, it's working. It's working well. So, I mean, I've run into a few issues. Like, for some reason, when I first launch a game, it'll go into like a black screen and I have to like suspend and resume. And that's really janky, but that's the jankiest thing I've seen so far. Um, and it's still like these are still early days for Bazite. So, I suspect that they'll fix that. Um, but it was an easy install. Um, I can give you, Bill, I can give you a link to a guide so you can put it in the show notes. But it was a pretty easy install, and now I'm playing uh, SteamOS on the Legion Go. And I know people don't like using SteamOS for, like, stuff that's a Bazite, Chimera, that's not actual SteamOS. But I think at this point, like, this is the closest thing we've got because it's booting me right into big picture mode or into game mode, really. Uh, I got the performance overlay. I've got TDP controls. I've got all that good stuff. 
So it's it's working for me. And I think uh, I think if people want that Steam OS experience on the ROG Ally or the Legion Go, this is a good way to go. When you have that up and running, if Valve releases like a Steam client upgrade for like Steam OS, can you do it through the like actual interface on the oh. Legion Go? Or do you have to like then go wait for them to like patch That's Bazite question. and then yeah, I, so I, I think it worked fine on the next light once I got Chimera OS up and running, but I don't know. Yeah. I was like, because they released a lot of updates lately, I noticed. Yeah, so I didn't double check that, but my but it should because so I'm gonna right. go into into beta now. Yeah, the client updates absolutely should. All the um up, actual deck updates that'll have to be they'll have to you know mirror that in there in what they're doing, but the client updates absolutely should. So I just opted into beta and it's restarting now. So I'll see what it does. Ooh. Oh, so I'm we can we, we find out later on this episode. Yeah, we're gonna find out. Look at because that retention I, writing uh, in on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> I I installed this uh, two days ago, two to three days ago. Um, and then there was the client update beta yesterday. So there should be a new beta for me. Very Does it cool. work with NVIDIA? It, look, I, it looks like on the Reddit. I, I haven't tested it on NVIDIA, but that is the question. Does, right? Like, I'll try it out, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how bad yeah. I want it. I, yeah. And that's, you know, a lot of people mentioned that too. You mentioned it and a lot of people mentioned in the comments that they, people, maybe Valve just wants to have like the perfect release where everything is compatible. To be honest, I think that's impossible. So like, right. yeah, they'd have to just, just use the Steam hardware survey, right? Like just go for the top, you know, percentile yeah. of cards. Well, yeah. they, they've said, what they've said is that they're going to release it on specific hardware first. So I would assume that right. we'll see an image that is specifically made for the ROG ally. And then we'll see an image that is specifically made for the Legion go. And then the MSI claw. Um, do you, prob- do you think that not. like Microsoft being part of the marketing for those handhelds that, that just makes it so that like valve couldn't work with those manufacturers. I don't know enough about like driver support to, to answer that question. Like that's, that's outside my wheelhouse. But what I would say is unless they need those companies to get driver support, I mean, let's just assume that you bought a laptop and that laptop had the, the, what's the, the, the Z1 extreme chip in it. Like, would they need anybody to help them get drivers support for that because that's like all that those through, devices you are seek it out yourself too right like mm-hmm. you could maybe i don't, I don't want to like act like i know i'm, I'm genuinely asking <laughs> questions but like, no you definitely could it would be it would be so cool because i'm going back to that question about uh you know whether they should keep it exclusive or not i don't think they really have much of a reason to because if you go way back to when they did steam os 2 or whatever it's called when they released it, uh, oh, right. they said they wanted it to kind of, you know, take a little bit of the market share away from Windows to kind of either A, you know, encourage Microsoft to actually, you know, orient that operating system for gaming more, or B, you know, give more competition in the field, which is always good. So I'm sure the philosophy's changed in like, a, what, a decade? But there, that's still got to be at least some sort of a driving factor for them at some point, I would think. It's all Richard all I the time. I love this. I like that view. <laughs> Big Rich. Yeah. <laughs> right. Figured it out. Uh, uh, okay. So um, real Emilio, quick. Emilio I had, uh, asked what I was getting at. He said, you mean like RLG Ally or Legion Go has a contractual obligation to to not support SteamOS? And that that is what I was getting at. Do you think that like yeah. they're they're not allowed somehow? I, I think if those either of those devices were more successful, I think that'd be a bigger problem. But it's not like, you know, yeah. like. They're prob- they have a good reason to come back to Microsoft and be like, look, like we need to do something. The ROG Ally is on sale for like 400 bucks right now. I was in Best Buy last weekend, and there's more open box ROG Allies on the shelf than new ones in that little glass display case. So there's clearly like issues they need to solve there with getting it into people's hands. So it's kind of like what Sony's doing with the PSVR 2, where they're like, yeah, we're going to make it work on PC just to give any incentive to pick one of these things up, you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be talking about the PSVR two later on in the uh, in the episode as well. Um, hey, I, sorry, yeah. I can confirm. So this is not yesterday's awesome. um, 
beta, but this is the March 12th beta. So that's awesome. it's, it's updating to last week's beta. Cool. And after that's that, really it should cool. update to today's. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, Ryan in chat says, I mean, you can boot into big picture mode already on Ally. It's great and very good for the store and all that. Not sure what would make me want to lose all my extra Windows functionality for SteamOS. I totally right. get what you're saying there, uh, Ryan. For me, though, like, on like I'm using it on I'm using Windows on a big computer that's underneath my my TV, and every time that Windows does something where like there's some stupid pop-up that I can't get rid of with my controller or like something like that. I have to come over here, grab a Bluetooth uh, uh, keyboard or bring my mouse over and so that I can close that kind of thing. Like that's the kind of stuff that is yeah. constantly Windows getting in its own way. If that kind of stuff never happened, I wouldn't care. I would be like Steam OS, Windows, I don't care. It's all the same to me. It's just a way to launch my games. But as soon as I don't have a controller attached, Windows just turns into a nightmare. And yes, it boot like that that system boots into big picture mode, but I still need a computer uh, a, a a keyboard and mouse all the time just to deal with weird nonsense that just happens because Windows is legacy and weird and old and you know not that old is bad. I'm an old man, all right. Um, yeah, and and there's nothing ahead. wrong with preferring Windows, right? Like if that's right. yeah what you prefer, the, or and that matches the the games you're playing, then that makes sense. For me, I I happen to prefer SteamOS, and like I'm mostly playing like 2D action platformers, card builders. Like I'm playing games that just it doesn't matter what. OS I play them on and it just for me I, I enjoy the same kind of as experience as you were saying Bill I just enjoy the sort of no fuss that you get with Steam OS I would yeah. dual boot it on every device like the Steam Deck when they said when they announced it that they would also launch dual booting alongside Steam OS with for PC mm -hmm. yeah that's what I would do like I would just have both because then when you want to sit at your desk use discord have a browser up watching tv shows like obviously windows is better suited for that or mm -hmm. if you just want the like no frills console style gaming experience like plugging your pc or laptop into your tv just boot up your other partition you know like and the rog ally is upgradable so you could just put a two terabyte in it and split it mm -hmm. yeah that's a really good point um well you know whenever steam os does come to other platforms. I will say one thing that we know for sure, a thousand percent, it's going to come to the Steam Deck 2. And when that Steam Deck 2 launches, Rich, you posted this over on your um, your channel, this, uh, this poll. You want to talk about that real quick? Yeah. So I asked, and this was inspired by a conversation that was happening in the like forums of gamingonlinux.com. Uh, so the question I had was, what do you think is the ceiling for units sold if Valve could manage a worldwide and retail release of the Steam Deck 2? And the options I gave were 0 to 5, you can see them on screen, 0 to 5 million units, 5 to 10 million units, 11 to 30, 31 to 50, or 50 plus. And I'm surprised there were a lot of people, how many is that there? 32% of people that said 11 to 30. And... 8%, Which you can tell because this is my this is my account. You can tell where I voted. <laughs> yeah, eight percent, thirty-one to fifty, thirteen percent, fifty plus million units. Like that's insane. That thirteen. I don't think they're wrong necessarily. I'm just saying I I wouldn't I have expected that a year ago for people to say that Steam Deck Two is capable of selling fifty plus million units. I think they're absolutely wrong. Like if yeah, you look at <laughs> if you look at the well first off, you know, you asked what like what I thought about this before the show and I post or I said, "Well, I need a time frame." So like one thing that you Ooh. that this happens to me every time I run a poll. I yeah. don't think of everything and then in, instantaneously somebody's like, "Well, what about this?" and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, right. of course." So right. there's no time frame here. So how long are you thinking anyway? Like how many years to get to yeah. these numbers? So I think that that was a good question that you asked when it came up because like it's not exactly a console in that way. So like I, my best guess would be like five years. 
Okay, so it took mm -hmm. the PS5 um, four years to sell roughly 50 million units. Am I right about that, Jimmy? Yep, I'm, I'm on the Wikipedia right now because that's like, you look at it, it's a lot of handhelds up here. They're all Nintendo, but like, yeah, there's obviously people who want handhelds. Oh, absolutely. Like, like us three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that 50 million is a crazy amount. Uh, and I think 10 to 30 million, if they launch it worldwide, like you said, I think that that's, that's easy. 31 to 50, I think that's harder, but yeah. doable. 50 million, yeah. I think, is almost impossible until we get to Steam Deck 3 or Steam Deck 4 or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. After after they have just a little bit more mainstream. Because while, like, us and the people who watch our YouTube channels or whatever, like, we're all like, yeah, Steam Deck is awesome. If I, I, I can count on one hand the number of people that I have met in real life that have a Steam Deck that's not me. One of them is my son, and the other one is my barber. It, don't make comments. I have a beard, okay? Uh, but <laughs> two people, that's it. I don't know yeah. anybody else in real life that owns a Steam Deck. Nobody. People in my like in my circle, I actually know a lot of people, um, maybe, mainly because of, I guess, my job, like, you know, Ray has one, the guy who does Xbox ready, my friend, two of my friends around here in Detroit have them. My friend Grayson in North Carolina has got one. Yeah. A lot, like it's mostly YouTuber people though, who I think have them, but imagine if valve released a, like a killer app style game though, like, you know, counter-strike left for dead half-life, all of those are playable on the steam deck, but they're not built for the steam deck. If valve actually released a game, that they made with a controller interface in mind or like a that, that can run well on the Steam Deck. I feel like that's where you start bumping the numbers up because you create the Nintendo situation where it's like, well, I could spend one to two thousand dollars right now and build a PC. I could buy a monitor, I could buy a keyboard, I could buy like a nice pair of headphones, uh, all a mouse, all that stuff. Or, you know, the Steam Deck sitting right there, entry level price, $399. I know this like killer app type of game I want to play runs well on it. Why not just grab one of those, right? Like I feel like yeah. Valve is kind of, you know, missing a critical piece here, which is remembering that they're a game company, you know? <laughs> I, I would agree that it would it would definitely help. But Valve yeah, has said yeah. they don't want they don't want to make exclu like a Steam Deck right. exclusive because they want to make they just want to make PC games. I would Yeah, so that's love where I think if, fifty million is like a little high. I think you're right there. But like yeah. I feel like that would juice it quite a bit. I think so. I would love to see Aperture Desk Job fleshed out into a full game because that mm -hmm. was really fun and it used every single part of the Steam Deck. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. I don't awesome. think it has to be like Steam Deck exclusive, but something that you can, even if it's just PC exclusive, but either way, right? Like Elden Ring felt like, and you said it in your video, Bill, but it felt like a killer app for the Steam Deck. Oh, yeah. And if they can keep doing that, like, I don't know why if they weren't to have, if they were to have a retail worldwide release, I don't see why they wouldn't put money towards marketing and, you know, market those as killer apps on the Steam Deck too. So have whatever the next From Software game is, like time their release such that they yeah. can actually do that and and market Do those Valve skins, right? Like what they did with yeah. Death Stranding where you get the like Gordon Freeman armor. It's just like little things like that yeah. to let people know that they're a player. And the, yeah. the timing couldn't be better, right? Like Microsoft's handheld that they're allegedly working on, it's not out. They're just kind of in disaster mode right now. Sony has the portal, but the whole goal with that is to play PS5 games, like stream to it. If their handheld's actually real, it's coming out in what, like two, three, four years? Like Valve can kind of clean up. And yeah, Elden Ring, that's the game that kind of wants, makes me want to have SteamOS on my PC just because exactly. the PC version of that game is still plagued with stuttering. It's plagued with frame drops. And while you run it at lower settings on the Steam Deck, like, you still arguably get the best experience that way or playing the PS4 version on PS5. Like that's your mm -hmm. two best bets. You know, you talk about skins. Why is Valve not capitalizing on working with game companies so that when a game comes out on PC, 
it has uh, uh, like they sell like Nintendo does this all the time. You know how yeah. many people have bought multiple Nintendo Switches just because it has a new design on the dock mm -hmm. or the yeah. Joy Cons? Like Valve could say, "All right, guess what? We're partnering with Elden Ring DLC, and we've got this amazing Elden Ring themed Steam Deck that's only available during the pre-order of this, and it comes with you know you buy it for." however much Steam Deck costs, which is, uh, you know, because there's different tiers, plus $60, so you're basically getting, like, a $10, $10 discount because, you know, the game costs $70 or however much it costs, $10 cheaper, and you get this combo bundle, and, like, that's a bunch of extra uh, bump to marketing for this new game, and it sells a bunch of Steam Decks, because people are like, well, they're partnering with these guys. It must run on there, so I'm going to buy it. And uh, people would people would buy that because people bought the the translucent one. Oh yeah, are you kidding? Yeah, are you kidding me? That I was like, that's the most mad I've ever been that day that it came out. <laughs> and it's like you know, in stock, out of stock. Then it's telling me I uh, tried too many times to purchase, so I make a new Steam account. It was so bad. And it was so annoying. But you're yeah. so right. Like people would show up for that stuff and. That gets the hardware out there. That gets people buying games on Steam. Like, that's the ultimate goal at the end of the day. You know what else gets people buying games on Steam is when you can buy them and then share them with your family because oh, yeah. Valve just announced yesterday Steam Families. I have to make a quick correction because I screwed up when I was making my video. I was sitting there. We had just finished eating dinner. I got a message from somebody that said, Bill, did you see this? And I looked at it and I immediately, I sent a message to our little discord channel. I was like, guys, and I pasted and then I ran upstairs and I sat down and I recorded a video, like a live reaction to reading it because I knew that it was huge news. And I screwed up in one part of my video where I said that you had to be online. You do not have to be online in the FAQ. It says, I'm trying to find it. Um, do I need to be online to play my shared games? Let's see if I can put this on the screen. And it says, you can play games from Family Library offline as long as that game supports family sharing, which is huge. But honestly, I don't think that that's the hugest part. The hugest part is the fact that you can share these games and it doesn't, it's not, it's not an all or nothing thing. Rich, you want to talk right. about this real quick? Yeah, so previously it would lock the entire library. So I have I have a library of like a thousand games and I share my library with my son who has like two games, right? And so if my son wanted to play something, let's say he was playing Splunky 2, then I would now no longer have access to my library of games at all. So I would go- Yeah, your whole library. My whole library of games. So I would go into offline mode so that now I can play Splunky 1. And now we're both playing at the same time. But now with Steam Families, it just does a per game lock. So now I wouldn't be able, if he's playing Splunky 2, I'm not going to be able to play Splunky 2 at the same time, but we can both be online and I can play something else. And the detail that I thought was really cool was what you told me with multiple copies. So if you yeah. have six people in your family and two people in your family have a copy of Bellatro, well, two members of your family, any two members, can be playing Bellatra. It doesn't matter who, who it is, and you can all play now. Or, or you won't lock anybody else out of the other games. Yeah, that's so good. And I think that like that's this change is absolutely massive. Um, after I came up and did my video, I turned it on. I texted my son, who was in his room. I, was like, I sent him a link so he would see how to do it. I was like, do this. And then... He went through and did it, and then he came upstairs and he sat down on the couch with me, and we just started looking through my Steam library, library, and saying, "Oh, okay, now I got this." Like some of his games that I didn't have before, now I have. Like yeah. I was like, "Oh, look, I got this game now, and you got this game now," and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna play Crisis Core," and so we like we were going nice. through the list and just looking at all the games that we suddenly so don't good. have to buy multiple copies of. There was one game I can't remember what it was. And he was like. Oh, I'm glad I didn't buy that because now he can just play my version of it. This is super consumer friendly. And I think it's a win for valve. 
Jimmy, what yeah. did you, what do you, you probably just put out your video about it, right? I just recorded it. I edited it right before this. I think it's awesome, right? Like, I don't have anyone to like to share with. I don't really care, but like, it's cool for having kids or like a roommate situation. Like when I was living with like my friends in college, that would have been so awesome if when GTA five came out, uh, we could have just bought one copy and shared it between the three of us instead of, you know, all buying three sixty dollar copies, especially when we're short on money. There's so many like tricky ways you could, you know, I'll, I'll pay for one copy on one account or X, Y or Z. I think that's awesome. The one thing that I wanted to check is if it allows you now. I don't know why this feature would activate this, but like when I'm playing Helldivers on my PC, when I'm waiting for everyone to like pick their loadout or like, you know, draw, do all the stuff in between matches, I've been picking up my Steam Deck and just knocking stuff out in Expeditions Mud Runner. And then it, it gives you that, unless you're in offline mode when you boot the game up, mm -hmm. it gives you that warning that's like, hey, you're already playing a game on another computer. I would love if they allowed you to, if they had some way to know that like you're playing a game on your main PC logged in the same account on your Steam Deck, playing a different game. Like, if they're being this consumer friendly with the family thing, I would love if they extended it to that because it's just one extra annoying step to have to put my Steam Deck in offline mode to play a game that has no online features. But, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. Someone asked about playing like an idle game on their desktop while they're playing something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So si similar use case. And I could see that, you know, like there are definitely people that are going to two screen it. So and it doesn't in that scenario, it doesn't hurt. Right. For for Valve to enable something like that. Um, of mm -hmm. course, there will always be people that are going to find some way to abuse. But that one seems relatively like, yeah, uh, modest. Not only that, but it's super easy to get around. Like you said, you just put it into offline mode. Offline so it's mode. not like having this as a restriction is actually stopping anything. And even if you mm. couldn't put it in offline mode, you could just make a second account and share it with that account, like a second family account so that you could do that. But then oh, like the achievements and the saves would be separated and that's not really a good right. solution, but you could still play it that way. And if that's the case, then the restriction isn't really useful in any way. So they should just get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Someone mentioned offline mode breaks achievement timestamps. That is a big deal for a lot of people. I personally don't happen to care too much about achievements, yeah. so it pops when it pops. But I know a lot of people take that seriously. So, oh I my god, get yeah, that. you think that's bad? <laughs> the, the PlayStation people, the trophy hunters, are like crazy. Yeah. They get mad when, like, if you pause a game, and there's like an in-game timer in this game. I forget what game it was on uh, sacred symbols. I was listening to it. Mm. Colin was talking about it <laughs> and it's like, when you pause the game, the timer will run for three more minutes and that throws off your game time. So he would reload a save once he unpaused oh, wow. the game to reload yeah. it back. Cause yeah. it's like, you want to make sure that the game clock is on par for some reason. Yeah. I don't, I don't really yeah. get it, but I get it. You know, like whatever you do, you like, if it's that, exactly. if that's important to you, I understand. Exactly. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that that's important to So they should fix that. Yeah. All right. Um, before we move on to uh, this story about the Playtron, we did just get a super chat come in. If you guys want to make sure that you're part of the show, you can use the super chat feature on YouTube and uh, we will uh, squeeze you in between the topics that we are, are pre-planned. Uh, he sent it to $10 super chat. Thank you so much. He said, this is very good news, but the skeptic in me is making me ask, the magician is distracting me with his right hand with these features. What is he doing with his left hand? What am I missing? I don't, I, I can understand why people are skeptical about stuff, but Valve wins with this. Like, this is a benefit to Valve because if I'm deciding between picking up a game on my PlayStation or picking it up on my Steam Deck, and if I can buy it and then share it with my son on the Steam Deck super easily, then I'm going to buy it there. If mm -hmm. I, same thing with the Nintendo Switch or uh, the Xbox. This makes a lot of sense for Valve because it incentivizes people to buy games on their platform. And I think that that's fantastic. Um, any thoughts on that? Uh, we'll start with Jimmy and then Rich. 
No, I think you're just 100 right. I, my my joke was going to be that the left hand is hiding the fact that they've delayed Steam OS three again to work on this feature. You know, like, <laughs> I don't really see a downside because the feature already existed. It just needed an update, and a lot of people were saying in the comments of the Verge tweet about their article that it's overdue. So. You know, just feels like writing a wrong in a little bit of a way. Like Valve yeah. is classic at introducing features and then kind of letting them languish. So it's nice to see them actually go back and repair something that obviously needed it because a lot of people use uh, library sharing. I think a lot yeah. of people wanted to use it, but it wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it went from kind of below in this industry standard to above industry standard. And maybe if they let it linger again, it'll it'll go back to sort of being at or below. Um, but I think you guys nailed it. I think there's always reason to be skeptical. I think that Valve, you know, they are better in a way than the other companies in that they are they don't have like shareholders and they don't have to worry about that side of things. But at the same time, like I'm I'm always going to be skeptical of any <laughs> any corporation because who knows one day they may have shareholders and things like that. So I think mm -hmm. I think it's reasonable to be skeptical. But I think this instance, like this, is a pretty pretty good feature. Um, the the most skeptical or cynical you can be about this is that they're looking towards you know user acquisition um but they they just they just surpassed 36 million so whatever they're doing seems to be working with that 36 million online concurrent users yeah didn't you it's tell like the, me three weeks in a row three three yeah. weeks in a row so 34 million uh two and a half weeks ago then 35 million the following week and now 36 million I, they haven't, and, and they had not passed any of those peaks in over a year. I think a year ago was the last time that they did a million, uh, they've surpassed a, a million kind of point. Okay. Um, RP in chat points out, uh, something that, that is important. He says you can't share, uh, family share GTA five because you can't family share games with third party launchers. Um, right, right. I didn't know about the third party launchers. That I sucks. just knew that some games could, what's the word I'm looking for? Some games could opt out, which is better than opt in. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, if it has a third party launcher, which a lot of games do, that does get in the way. That's a wrinkle that, that I hadn't thought of. Like yeah. Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 3 has a, that Larian. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, does it depend on the type of launcher? I don't know. any? Yeah. yeah, like Cyberpunk and The Witcher have one too. Correct. Well, yeah, it we'll does, but you that. don't have to actually log in to use it. Right. You just hit play. Yeah, you just hit play. So that one, it it might not get in the way, but that's definitely something. That's definitely something to think about, because uh, I I don't know. I think that would be. That's another reason to dislike third party launchers, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> Add it to the oh, list. There was there was one thing that Valve took away with this update. Uh, I saw mm -hmm. an, I saw someone tweet about it on uh, pretty recently. So you can no longer this doesn't apply to me. You can no longer share across multiple countries. So, yeah, so right. if you try to add a family member that is not in the same country, it's not going to work. Like Which that, that sucks for those people like that. Yeah. That does suck because there are families where they are, you know, you know, maybe, you know, I got two daughters and a son. My, my daughters are adults. If they decide, you know what, we're going to move to New Zealand. A, I would be sad, but then they wouldn't be able to share my games. And so I would be yeah. like, that'll teach you. That'll teach you. That'll ya. teach you. <laughs> <laughs> there was. All um, right. Go ahead. Uh, last thing. There was a game Berserk Boy that I've been playing. Pretty good game. Uh, for some reason that has family sharing disabled. It seems like it was just like unintentional. So I let the developer know and. I think they're changing it. So cross some figures on that one. Cool. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. We're going to talk about the games that we've been playing in just a second. But first, we want to talk about Playtron OS, which is a Linux based system for gaming. I honestly, I don't like uh, for me, I'm like, I'm, I'm Steam Deck OS or Steam OS or nothing. I'm, I'm like, part of me has considered doing, I want to call it Bellatro, but it's not Bellatro. What's it called again? Ba Bazite. Bazite. Part of me is yeah. considered Bazite. But I'm probably just going to wait. But then I read about this, and ooh, this is so bad. You want to tackle this, Rich, and, and tell people about it? Yeah. So first I'll give like the elevator pitch that was on The Verge. So it says, what if there were an Android gaming, Android of gaming and OS you could install on any capable hardware to get a controller-friendly PC experience? So like an Epic, Epic deck that could play Fortnite, 
or a 5G deck for cellular carriers or a PlayStation deck for Sony's like PC ambitions. Um, so it sounded pretty interesting, but yeah, then it was, uh, so Liam from Gaming on Linux gave this update, right? Where they have apparently been, oh, this is still the plan. So yeah, I was gonna, do you have the other article too? I don't know that I do. Yeah, is okay. it in the show notes? Uh, it's, it might not be an article. I think it's just a tweet. My bad. Here, oh, me, well, at the top of this, he has an update about the about the stolen oh, stuff. My bad. I missed that. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like they stole a video and used it as part of their pitch. So a video showcasing Witcher 3 playing on an arm device. Um, and yeah, they, they used it without permission and got hit with a copyright claim. So, yeah, they seem a little suspicious at this point. To mm -hmm. say the least. <laughs> that's yeah. not good. No. Go ahead, Jimmy. I just said that's not good. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I'm agreeing. That's bad. Oh, okay. It is bad. Uh, people were saying in chat, they were like, talk about Playtron. I don't really have an, uh, an opinion on it. I'm not going to use it. I will say, it, this is this like this picture of this device. Is this a <laughs> the render? Is horrible. This thing it's looks just, awful. It's just a render. It's just a render. Think about it. Think <laughs> about it like they just want to kind of create a framework for other companies to build Linux based devices, which okay, I think is well, a good idea. But yeah. I did, I did have a not quite a red flag, but a yellow flag. I'll say, like it's ten million dollars seems like a lot of money um, to to get to kickstart this, right? Um, not because. I mean, OSs are expensive, right? So in, in a way, it's not that much money. But my concern is that Bazite and Chimera have already been doing so much work towards this, right? So I would for like free. to see... Yeah, for free, exactly. So my, my initial yellow flag was alleviated when I saw that there were Chimera devs on board with this. But now my yellow flags have turned into red flags because of stuff like this. <laughs> and there are people that are, you know, at this point, they're just saying, like, this is just um like investor bait right uh so that that is concerning at this point if anybody wants to make that device please dear god don't <laughs> because Just don't do it the d-pad uh the the touch pads on either side instead of having a d-pad and face buttons no thank you uh and i'm somebody who loved the steam controller so no thanks <laughs> all right let's uh let's talk about the games that we've been playing uh jimmy Nobody else on the podcast has been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth except you and me, and I've been dying to to hear like what other people think about it um, because I am in love with this game. It is so good. What like what are your thoughts on it? Obviously, completely spoiler free. Right, right, right. I'm still early because I was out of town this weekend, and I was like, dang, can't bring my PS5. But I'm like deep into Chapter Two. I am just knocking out the open world stuff. Everything I've experienced so far is a step up from remake, except for obviously the graphics. But like, I love this game. The combat advancement so much better. The fact that side quests are tied to specific characters. You can advance the relationships. That's awesome. The voice acting was punched up a little bit. Like, I almost I, I can't talk about like the difference. The cloud has a different voice for a portion of the intro. And just like hearing the voice actor kind of like changed to that was awesome. Same with Sephiroth. It was so sweet. Uh, I love the open world uh, side objectives. The best ones for me are the combat trials where like it gives you three objectives. And I love so much that you don't have to tackle all three objectives yes. at the same time. You can just redo the battle because if you start doing all the open world stuff, you kind of get way stronger than those enemies. So you're like killing them too fast to actually do all three of the objectives a lot of the time. Like being able to ride Chocobo, the soundtrack got a huge upgrade. Just some of the story moments in the intro hit harder than the vast majority of rem remake for me. I I saw that like no one's playing this game. It's like it, it sold ten thousand copies I think in its second week compared to like two hundred and something thousand in its first week in Japan. We don't have the U.S. numbers obviously, and those were just physical sales, but. I don't know if it's open world fatigue or like the fact that it's a direct sequel and it's not called remake anymore. I don't know. But like if you've been waiting for a PS5 game that takes advantage of the PlayStation 5, oh. takes advantage of the dual sense, gives you a game you can really dig into and get a lot of enjoyment out of that doesn't really feel like it has a lot of filler despite having a lot to do. 
I like could not recommend any game over this one at this point. Yeah, I'm having an absolute blast with it. I'm on chapter seven or eight. I think chapter seven, uh, close to the end of chapter seven. I'm 35 hours in, and um, I'm I've gotten to like a beach zone, and uh, like we're going around and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I ended up. I, I'm not going to do any spoilers, so I won't talk about any of the quests. There, there are some things where, you know, in the open world, like you're in chapter two, Jimmy, and in the open world, it, it's clear that they've got a, a loop that they want you to do. All right. So it's like, go to this open world section, do a bunch of stuff. Okay. After you finish that stuff, we're going to funnel you towards like a, an objective. You accomplish that objective, get a bunch of story beats, and then bam, more open world stuff where you can go around and just kind of spend your time doing all of this different stuff. And and the thing that I'm loving about it is that everything feels different. And especially like you talked about the combat trials. So in the game, you have the ability to uh, um, push pressure. You have the ability to pressure an enemy, stagger an enemy, and then you can do like crazy damage to him, right? So you might have a, an, a, a, an enemy that's weak against ice or something. So you focus on ice attacks in order to pressure that enemy. So one of the objectives might, might be that you have to pressure an enemy, stagger an enemy, and then kill everything within a certain amount of time. And sometimes that is really hard to do all three things at once. So I, I'm with you. I, like, I was very excited to see that they didn't erase my progress when i went back to try a second I time like, oh. i just like that this game never it does its best to not get in your way of having fun like everything is boiled down to just be quick not necessarily easy a lot of the time but there's always like it's very clear about what your objective is mm -hmm. there's a lot to do mini game wise and then have you been playing all the queen's blood side quests i i have um i will say that I was listening to an, a spoiler free podcast and they were talking about Queen's Blood having like a story quest line throughout it that I, I heard not, that too. like because I'm not there yet. So I didn't realize that. That's exciting to me. I am Queen's Blood is awesome. Needs to be on my phone. I need I to know. be able to take that and play it wherever <laughs> I, I am instead of just having it trapped on my PlayStation. I'm not that a card be. game guy at all. And it's it's so good. It's simple. But yeah, well, that should be a, a thing from a now developer on. Developer, just they said one developer. They said, "All right, you, the, you, this small team from the from the rebirth team, you spend a year and make this card game." They spent a year on it. Awesome. What job. were you going to say, Rich? I, I think that should be standard from now on. Any Final Fantasy mini game should have a mobile version from now on. Mm -hmm. Like that. That you should could be do a collection. Long. Like, uh, yes, that would be screen. amazing. Could, like, <laughs> it all would be fun. And they kind of did that, right? Like, they released the G bike segments from the, I guess, the original uh, in oh. Japan on, as a mobile game. And it was like, there was also a snowboarding game on PS1 that was just the snowboarding yeah. section. Yeah, yeah, so, like, yeah. they've already kind of like played around with it. I bet they're looking at Gwent, where everyone kind of gassed up Gwent for a long time and then they released it as a game and yeah. no one played it. But this yeah. is so much simpler than Gwent. Like, it would be so good on a phone. I'm always looking for new mobile games because that's what I do on the treadmill at the gym. This game would just eat that 30 minutes up so quick. It's, yeah. it's, I, I'm not like the right person to review it technically just because I don't love card games that much but this one when i see that little marker i just be i forget the story forget anything i'm doing i'm right. playing that person in queen's blood because it's it, it gets totally. better jimmy like the 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 depth to the gameplay for queen's blood gets deeper as you go further into the game because you get cards that behave in different ways that's awesome yeah right one now thing i will say is based. it needs some balance like it's fine because it's a single player game and I'm playing against NPCs, so who cares? But there's some really, really powerful cards that would just have to be gone before they yeah. release this as something that I could play against other people. I I have just on the sales thing. I have been listening to the f past few podcasts and I heard like Carrie talk about Carrie and Russ right both talk about how just not having it on PC probably affected sales too. And I think that could yeah. be a factor. But I. 
for me, like if I think about what kept me from buying this day one, uh, it was what Jimmy said, sequel, right? I still haven't finished remake. I can. So now I'm going to go finish remake when I, when I have the time, but if I had already, right. Okay. But if I had already finished it, like it would have been a no brainer to pick up rebirth for me, but I, I just am not there. So I think it's, you know, there are different reasons for different people, but I think the fact that this seems really like a, you have to be an FF seven fan for this game and that'll get you really going. Um, I think that's a factor here. Beating remake will make you a FF seven fan. I, yeah. I never played the original when I was a kid. I played crisis core and watched advent children. Yeah. And then, you know, the first half of remake is pretty rough. Um, yeah. We went in depth about it on the Sum Inside podcast. I was just on that like two weeks ago. Uh, when you when you hit the midway point, there's 18 chapters. Literally, when you hit mid chapter nine, it's just like it goes from, you know, like what are we doing here? What is the what's the motivations? Who's the villain? What's really going on? To just like everything just locks into place. All that setup kind of takes in. And then I went from playing this game in between stuff, kind of picking it up, putting it down to like. I played this game for like three nights straight, ended up finishing it at two in the morning because the story just picks up that much. And then that w- it w- went from this thing that I thought was cool to something that I'm like full on yeah. invested in the world now. And I understand why they're doing so much with it. Yeah. But you know what's surprising? I just, is there, whenever you see a situation like this, when, you know, there's first game sells really well, second game comes out, doesn't sell as well. You, you think like, oh, I'll go check uh, PSN profiles, see what the trophy completion is on the first game. Mm-hmm. I was assuming that remake would not have a lot of completion, but uh, 55 to 60 percent, I think, is how many people got the story completion trophy in remake. Wow. So, no, that's, that's a lot. Kind of surprising. Like, yeah, yeah, even seeing that metric was surprising. Yeah, but for that game, there was a lot of stuff that you had to tread through, like all yes. the side quests. The side quests in remake, in my opinion, were just not fun. They're and so bad. especially especially very early on the early on stuff was just not fun and people got through that to finish the story and i remember i was talking to a friend at work and he he said um what just happened he didn't realize that it was three games he did not understand right, a lot that of it was going to be three games and a lot way. of people they get there to the end and they're like what the hell is this why, where's the rest of the game? Just Midgar? Right. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> and I can understand why people might be hesitant to pick up the next one. Plus, there's way less PS5s out there. I mean, we talked about that on the on the yeah, show like, well, like last week or the week before, but what was that? Yeah. I think it's like a third amount of PS5s out there Yeah, yeah. compared to how many PS4s there were. I don't know. I think this game will probably have a long tail. There's mm-hmm. probably a you know, big, big group of people waiting for Dragon's Dogma 2 um yeah so once that's out once that once people realize that that game is probably not their cup of tea if you're just going in for like an open world game i think a lot of people are going to be like really put off by some of the systems and dragon's yeah. dogma i think that's when you'll kind of see it sort of like rear back we also don't know american or european sales so uh, that's true. or digital sales in japan so it could have been one of those games that was just heavily digital versus physical even though they marketed it on two discs in the first trailer it was like Final <laughs> fantasy 7 rebirth on two discs that's so funny <laughs> um well, you know we might as well use this you know we're talking about x number of ps4s x number of ps5s might as well talk about the ps4 stats that got leaked i'm going to use big old air quotes here for the audio listeners they got leaked um boy okay so System memory for a standard PS5 is says or, or system memory. Uh, standard PS5 is 448 giga, giga, gigabytes per second gig, or 14 giga transfers per second. PS5 Pro has 18 giga transfers per second. I don't know what that means. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, Rich is like I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Somebody knows, and they're gonna they're gonna tell us in the comments, and we appreciate you. Um, CPU identical to the PS5, but the PS4 PS5 Pro has a higher frequency, so it's going to be at higher gigahertz. Um, audio runs at a higher clock speed. GPU uh, renders 45% faster than PS5 with better ray tracing stum, uh, stuff, 33.5 teraflops, 
the thing that I find the most interesting is PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling. Basically, their copy of FSR, uh, DLSS, uh, Intel, XESS, all that stuff that, that they're doing. So first off, first question, does this make sense to you guys? Do, like, do you think that this is even close to real? Jimmy, you run PS Ready. I, I was going to say let Rich go first because I'm okay. I, I've talked about it enough. I want to hear what Rich has to say. All right. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. I was I was sick as a dog this weekend, so I saw some tweets, and I'm like, what is going on? Because the first tweet I saw was that the source was Moore's Law is dead, and so I kind of um, just shelved it. Right, like I'll look at this yeah. one. I'm not so sick, but like, what is the source for this leak? That was my first uh, insider gaming is Tom Henderson. And this dude is like, oh, it's Tom. Uh, if it's Tom, uh, it's it's yeah. Bible. Yeah, and no, he, I didn't. He's uh, I've been covering this for a long time. He's been reporting basically all of this just in a more like brief way. So it just mm -hmm. confirmed a lot of what we've been hearing, like the 40 percent faster GPU, 10 yeah. percent overclock on the CPU. So yeah. I I think this is legit. They also gave examples of games, uh, like two examples where one was running at on the ps5 it was running at like they, the, the way that i forgot i don't want to say it wrong I, it's in a yeah. different article i i don't have the link right now mm -hmm. essentially they want to use this console to merge fidelity and performance mode so you'd get the you know the graphics of fidelity mode with the performance of performance mode and then yeah. i saw in the digital foundry video that the PSSR right now has the capability to upscale from 1080p to 4K and that it's going to be really easy for devs to back patch games. So like the stuff that's coming out before the PS5 Pro that's already out, like they'll be able to put out patches that allow it to take advantage of PSSR. So theoretically, like back when the PS4 Pro came out, every game will see some sort of improvement unless it's Bloodborne. Yeah, that yeah, that sounds legit. Um, then. I, my feeling for me is that this only this only incentivizes people I think that don't already have a PS5 and also of course the super fans right like but yeah. it's not like it doesn't feel like a must update which I think is fine you same don't with have the to have PS4 a... Pro you know they never right. they ever even release numbers on PS4 Pro sales like so yeah I can't imagine yeah you're do. right yeah so for me i mean like if i didn't have a ps5 i'd be looking at this for sure um i like i like that they're focusing on i saw some, some of the analysis and it looks like the cpu is still bottleneck but you know with what they're actually focus focusing on like what you said on the actual um, super resolution the upscaling right and merging like you said fidelity and performance i think that's really all you need right like you want to carry over as much of the library without developers having to do extra work as possible yeah and the ps4 pro mode back in the day was like magic it, it was so cool how you could play you know like older games from the ps4 generation just better and it was yeah you just had to go into the settings on your ps4 pro and turn on ps4 pro mode and it would just work and then they kind of advanced that with the ps5 with those patches that last of us part two got uh ghost mm -hmm. of tsushima god of war and they were always just really good patches so sony's always been cool about this uh psr i think is really exciting just because they have the ability to focus on one piece of hardware versus you know dlss obviously dlss has a smaller subset of cards because they segment it by generation and then you're only with nvidia cards or fsr right. which is on everything and on console like on ps5 fsr is largely pretty bad i would say like when you play jedi survivor they've improved it but like you can see the like the shimmering around the hair, the actual hair fibers are all blocky. As you get farther out into the draw distance, it like degrades a lot. I'm assuming that's what they're using in Rebirth, which looks pretty bad also, in 60 yeah, FPS mode. Yeah, in performance mode, it looks pr like it's a blur fest. Yeah. I'm I, yeah. I don't wear my glasses when I'm playing that game. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm playing that on my TV. Like, you know, 
five feet away because it actually looks pretty good that way but if i was playing here on my monitor i'd be like what the hell is going on with this yeah. like is my monitor running at like 720p or something but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you're right that this is for the hardcore user, which I am. So I'm stoked yep. for this just because, you know, I was kind of gravitating more towards PS5 for a while because of all the stuttering and like, you know, you buy a PC game on day one, you're just an idiot at this point. And then now I'm gravitating back towards PC because they've kind of ironed out a lot of the issues. And now I'm like, oh, if I had a PS5 Pro, I could play on my TV more and know that I'm not missing out if by not playing it on PC, you know, so. I'm excited. I hope it comes in black. That's my one wish. It's just out the gate. Black console, black DualSense Pro that you can upgrade to. They like, need to. Know. They need yeah. to. It needs to be a friggin' rectangle. Just make a... Sony? <laughs> make a rectangle, Sony! Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> or you you but, look at the PS2 to the PS2 Slim, and it's, it's incredible how mm -hmm. much they're able to shrink that thing. And, you know, even PS3 to PS3 Slim and PS4 to PS4 Slim, like, those are, you know more than marginal decreases in size but like you put the ps5 slim next to the ps5 it's like you didn't need to release this like, <laughs> what are we doing yeah. here yeah pretty much what they need to do if they really want to sell some extra units is they've been talking like there have been the rumors about the bloodborne remake or whatever for so long yeah. like i'm convinced they're working on it so please do yeah, that uh, if we do that over on sacred symbols colin he never leaks anything unless he's got like, you know, a billion sources. And I think he's got like a close to like high 90s percent success record. And he said it like that he had it on good authority that they were going to release a Bloodborne port on the PS5. Wow. And it just disappeared in Let's the thin air. Now the rumors PS6. It's like, <laughs> why are we even talking about the PS6? Right. They're barely releasing PS5 games at this point. Right. But, yeah, yeah I don't I'm hear fine about with PS6. these mid-gen upgrades. They give me an opportunity to make a video. They give me an opportunity to like get momentary satisfaction blowing 600 bucks. And we know <laughs> that the PS5 is not getting a price drop because the parts are still as expensive around as they were when it came out. So I fully expect this thing to be 600, but like, I don't care. I, I like the yeah. PS5 interface. I like playing games on my TV. And we know that they are working on some sort of app. And I just like have all of my fingers and toes crossed that it mm. in incorporates some sort of cross save because like that's the only thing that could get me to buy games on a different launcher than steam is if they yeah. i can buy them on one thing play them on my ps5 and play them on my pc yeah that would be neat well you talked about a price drop and the you know playstation 5 pay playstation 5 pro not getting a price drop do you think that if the ps5 pro comes out that the ps5 and the ps5 slim I find it's hard to. Do you think that those get a price drop for those part for the the Hiroki current Toki, whatever's the man himself, the new interim CEO was saying that right. they're not doing a price drop at all. So I'm sure you'll still see these random sales like the one that's going on right now where you can get it was supposed to be just the digital model with Spider-Man 2 for 400 because they raised. So you would basically get the digital edition console for the price that it was before they released the slim, which like is stupid. But uh, now they dropped the price of the disk drive model with Spider-Man 2 to 400. So there's random sales that go on, but I don't think we're ever going to see a permanent price drop for this console until right around the time of the PS6, like when they're ready to announce it. Because he was saying, and it, it, he did this huge investor call, but he was like, they expected the price part, part prices to fall as time went on, like it does in every other generation, but it just didn't. So yeah. They, they want to make it. They're really aggressive about making a profit on the PS5 this gen. Well, um, you know, that's not getting a price drop. But will the PSVR 2 get a price drop? Because they just stopped production on the PSVR 2. <laughs> Listen, I bought a PSVR 2. Me I too. put it on my stupid head. I thought, this is a this is amazing. This it's is so, so good. It is. And then there were no games to play on this thing. I'm super happy that Sony has said, hey, we're working on PC support. Like, thank God. Yeah. But yeah. like they're doing that because ain't nobody buying this thing for $549. Do you do you see it getting a price drop? Dude, I just did it. I this was my video that hopefully went up today. Um I was like, yeah, they need to do a price drop. The thing costs more than yeah. a PlayStation 5. Like, that's crazy. And if you wanted to get it with Horizon Call of the Mid, 
which I uh, well, like whoa, that bucks. game is fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I, I'm just like a, I'm a Horizon <laughs> Universe mid mid fester. I don't know. Um, yeah, six hundred bucks. Yeah, right. Like no one's showing up for that, and the fact that it doesn't have backwards compatibility with PSVR one, so you got to keep that piece of shit around. Like that hurts <laughs> so much. Yeah, I, mean, I understand why they, they did it. It was a different tech. Either. Like, right, because they needed like it was inside out, right? And uh, you needed the camera and the weird middle box that you plugged into the PS4. <laughs> like you needed yeah, all so that many hardware. Wires. And they've just they've done a bad job at getting both porting their own games that they made first party wise for the PSVR, and they've done a bad job getting third party developers to you know upgrade their games. To get the an PS4 Astrobot too. game out there, you know, like make yeah. a make some first party uh psvr2 games and like just get get a bunch of them out there to so i'll have something to play but right now it sit, things sits under my desk for the Hopefully, rest of this podcast yeah, we're great. for the rest of this podcast we should just talk about how underutilized the astrobot property is because oh my god it's crazy i could yeah, talk about that for hours it's so like the the game on the ps5 is amazing the 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 way that it uses the controller i would say it's very similar to the experience of playing i want to say portal but that's not it with uh a aperture desk job oh, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. similar to play playing aperture desktop on on the uh on the steam deck and like so like it's a cute little mascot and it would sell and, a bunch if they made them. And I don't know. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the PSVR one game, the Astrobot rescue mm -hmm. mission. That was also really, really good. Yeah. And it's just crazy. Cause like I've used the quest three. I've, I have a quest two. They're uncomfortable after a while when they're on your head, the PSVR, because everything is handled by the PS five, it's so light on your head and it's just, it's soft on your eyes and their foveated rendering system they have where it, I thought this wasn't going to work right where it only renders what you're looking at it. You never notice anything being a little bit softer on your like peripheral vision. Like it takes that into account. The stuff they're able to do with it is just so cool. It's just, once again, when Sony doesn't immediately have a hit, they just divert all resources away from it and then just yeah. cross their fingers, I guess that it takes off. I know that the Vita, the big reason they really abandoned that thing was because it was totally cracked open like in 2016, but you can't really there's nothing to crack open with the psvr2 hopefully they pull a valve and just like move all the people that are working on the psvr2 over to this handheld because i want a handheld from sony more than i want support for psvr2 i think at this point that's fair i mean that's fair um i i find it so weird that they would that the idea that they would put out a handheld right after shipping the portal yeah right you know, like, then why even have made the portal? The portal... I know. Like, the, I understand why the portal exists. I bought one. Mine was broken. I sent it back, and I said, ah, screw it. I didn't buy a new one. Um, but I, I can understand why you would sell the portal, but why would you sell the portal and then turn around afterwards and then sell a handheld that actually plays games? I think that that's just very like that's bad planning does like, who would does, buy both does two to three years count as right afterwards like are, are we including that yeah <sighs> like that's when the handheld's supposed to come out if it's real yeah and we know the portal's selling well but we don't know how long its tail's going to be or if that I meant, was like a flash in the pan where they just i meant to bring that up right? yeah i meant to bring that up because didn't they say the psvr2 was selling well like a yeah. few months well it's <laughs> so like out. That, so do you right so, exactly but that's the same phrasing that they use for the portal so like do you think we'll see a, an article like this six months from now eight months yeah. from now about the portal well there's the good thing about the portal for them is there's nothing to really update on it you know it does yeah. one thing it has like yeah. i think eight gigs of storage so there's no future for it to get more features mm -hmm. i don't yeah. think like uh but yeah the the specific words they used were like not necessarily that it's selling well it was just that it was selling better than they thought it would too so yeah. like they had to kind of like even we can't decide made. why we would have this thing yeah 
but I get it's just weird because you look at the I just looked at that Wikipedia list of the best selling consoles. I mean, it's dominated. The top 10 slots are mostly handheld. So it's like, yeah, we, we're getting this cool point where you could actually play the. you don't have to buy two separate games, right? Like the Nintendo Switch yeah, mastered yeah. that like Sony, for some reason, didn't read the room and see that they could kind of do the same thing. But yeah, I hope I think it. it just takes time. I think PS6 yeah. like that could be the thing. Yeah, I'm always for more hardware because I'm fighting back against the Twitter people who are like, consoles are going away. There's never going to, we're all going to be playing on PC in like five years. So I hate that. I hate thinking about it. Just the only I, way I, I that, like... that ever happens is if there's a, like, if there is a one default box that you can buy that yeah. everybody has, that, and then all the devs can focus on that one thing. Because as soon as, you know, Jimmy tells me how great this game is and I go out and buy it on PC and my PC is a potato and I load it up. I'm like, I can't, right. it doesn't even run. Yeah. What are you talking about? There's, there's too many people out there that don't understand that different computers have different specs. Like, and they're expensive. Like if you want to get yeah. PS5 level performance, I mean, you're, you're in at least a grand, like, and that's, I think a low Estimate. Yeah. I saw Linus did his video. I did a video kind of talking about this. I don't know when it's going to come out. It's like a banked video. But like Linus did his video where he was able to beat the PS5 for 476 bucks. He was able to do it using an Intel card, which I you know, wouldn't recommend to most people. He was able to do it buying entirely used parts and sourcing a free case. So like he had to really penny pinch to get to that 500 ish dollar range. And now the PS5 is selling for 400 bucks with a game. So, you know. I think we got to be realistic here and say, like, if you're talking about PCs replacing consoles, like, price has got to drop a lot. Yeah, it would literally only be Valve, right? That could make it. In, make Which would be sweet. Box. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. They're the only I'm ones that on could that make too. a set-top box that would, that would perform at that level. Are you listening, Gabe? Are you listening? <laughs> we <laughs> want, listen, I'm going to click on a thing. Give it to us. That's all we want, man. Just give us a, a Valve console, and we'll all be happy. Would you? Would you be happy, Jimmy? Am I looking the wrong way? Would you be happy, yeah, Jimmy? Now you're looking the right way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be stoked. We were talking about it in the Discord the other night. Uh, like, I was never in on the idea of the Steam machine back when it first came out, but now with save transferring, you know, your library being shared, Steam OS being as great as it is. That'd be right. awesome. I have so many games on Steam. It would just be great to be able to play them on a TV without extending an HDMI cord, you know, using mm -hmm. my nine foot dual sense cable, <laughs> making sure the screen turns off when a game launches, like X, Y, and yep. Z. Like eliminate all the uh, bloat from the yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. By the way, I, that's cool that Linus did that video. I didn't know that. I'll have to go take a look. Um, I just wanted to shout out a channel called Oz Talks Hardware, Oz Talks HW. He his whole channel is like gaming on a budget where he's penny pinching cool. and he did a $500 PS5 killer 3 months ago. So, Ooh. good channel just in general, but Wait, yeah. what what's can you say it again so I can look it up and save it yeah. for later? Oz Talks HW. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah. I love that. I think it's cool when people do that. Like Mm -hmm. that's just fun because getting more people in on pc gaming is great agreed it is um let's move on i want to talk really quickly about star wars battlefront classic collection first off yikes bad <laughs> like so i got a review copy i loaded it up i played the single player because nobody was like there was nobody to play with right it was mm -hmm. before launch I played a little bit of the single player and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I can see myself dumping some hours into this. A fun, nostalgic trip. And then launch day came and they had three servers for 10,000 people or whatever. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is this uh, the allegedly, I'm saying so that I don't get sued, allegedly Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection has used a modder's work without giving them credit. Um, it says, as reported by IGN, players noticed a mod created by a modder, I am Shaman. Uh, it was reportedly featured in the game, despite the developer clarifying last month 
that it did not include any code or content that was taken from uncredited sources. Um, so I guess there, it was in like some video of the game. And people are like, hey, that belongs to so-and-so. And they were like, oh, uh, you know, we were capturing placeholder footage and we left it in by accident. That wasn't real. But then it's in the game. This mod apparently is in the game. And they just oh my God. straight up stole it. Not only is the game broken and you can't play it. And, hey, all the times that people have been like, well, you can't trust these people who are getting review copies. I got a review copy. I'm telling you it's bad. Okay? So <laughs> not only is the game broken, you can't play it. Uh, maybe someday they can fix that. I hope that they can because when I was playing single player, I was having fun. But then to that, for if they allegedly just stole this person's mod work and put it in their game, that is not cool. What do you think about that, Rich? So I, I have to comment on this and then I got to bounce because I got to go yeah. pick up my kids. But it's interesting because this is the same publisher that published Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remastered. Mm -hmm. And um, the developer of Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remastered, uh, I believe it's X Proger. You can look him, up, look him up on Twitter. X Proger is the developer of, um, shoot, I'm, I forget the name. Open Lara. Open Lara is an engine, right, that recreates the Tomb Raider games. So, like, oh. for that game, they went and found the guy and recruited him to make this game. That's so, the way you do it. That's the way you do it. So, what happened with Star Wars Battlefront? Why didn't you go and get the guy? and have him do it like pay him the right amount of money get him a team like they did with tomb raider so this is, it's super disappointing because tomb raider excellent remaster and you know they did they did it right so i'm, I'm disappointed that they didn't do it right for this one yeah this me studio, too i hope with all the people leaving this studio we get like a history of it or something because no clip all from grace with them is insane like you know, the remastering, they started out really good with their remasters. Then KOTOR 2 came to the Switch, had a game-breaking bug at the end of the game, took them months to fix it. They were working on the remake of KOTOR, and then something happened. Like, uh, there was a lot of stuff that came out about, like, internal struggle, blah, blah, blah. So they got removed from that. It got handed to Saber. Now this, it's just like, this studio is, like, falling apart, it seems like, in a bad way. Well, speaking of falling, like, oh, go ahead. Oh, they had every opportunity to succeed, right? Like, yeah, just weird moves all around. Well, speaking of weird moves, Rich has to weird move his way out of the show. Uh, what so a let's great segue. Well, thank you. I've, <laughs> you know, I've been trying. Too. Uh, so uh, <laughs> let's let's just wrap up the show because I think we've been talking for a while, and I think it's a good it's a good ending point. Rich, you had a video that came out today. What was that video all about, my friend? Yeah, so I talked about the the Steam families. It's awesome. I also talked about the the Steam lawsuit, the Valve lawsuit, Will Fire versus Valve. Uh, I did. Someone mentioned in my comments that Will Fire actually founded Humble, and I forgot about that detail. So yeah, that's that's a good. That might be where they're getting their funding, uh, but it's an interesting lawsuit where they're kind of alleging that uh, Valve has a monopoly, and you, you know, well, really that they're that they have anti-competitive practice and their price fixing. Gotcha. Okay. Speaking, yeah. speaking of humble bundle, um, the steam families thing yeah. has made humble bundle so much more valuable. If you do not know what humble bundle is subscribe to humble choice. I will leave a link down below. If in, in the show notes, subscribe to humble choice, you get a bunch of games every month and now you can share them with your family. Jimmy, you had a video come out today. Uh, what was that video? I don't know. He doesn't remember. I had, like, I had like three banked, so it's a PlayStation News video, and oh, then okay. I've got a deck. I got a deck ready that I finished today. That'll be about the Steam family sharing and uh, the ROG Ally price drop. And I had, I had a lot of fun talking about the ROG Ally. Awesome. Uh, so huge thank you to everybody who came and hung out with us. It was over 500 people, and uh, we haven't done a live show in a long time. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. You're awesome. Uh, stay rad, everybody. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Bye-bye, everybody. See ya.